So if you've been following along so far, you should have the tools to be able to create an animation that looks something like this. So in this video, we're going to set up a camera and produce a video of our final animation. So first, let's set up our viewport so it's easier to place the camera. What I want is a top, front, and right view. And you'll see why in just a second. Now cameras are just like any other object. We can find them over in the Create tab. There's a little icon that looks like a camera, so let's click that. And there's two options to choose from. I always use the target because it gives a focus point. So what we're going to do is click in our top view, hold down the mouse, and drag the focus point until we get it somewhere by the robot, and then release the mouse. Now let's change our perspective view to a camera view. So now this view will always show what the camera sees. You can't actually adjust this view. The only way to change it is by changing the camera. The camera has a focus point that's a little white square. So this can be moved on its own. And as we move it, the camera's view changes. So next what we can do is go in our front view and move the camera up. So we can start with sort of a bird's eye view of our work cell. You can adjust this and the focus point separately until you get something that you like. Now you can work between the different views to move the camera to find what looks best. Once we've found a good position, we can go into our set key mode and select the camera and the focus point and set an initial key. Next what we're going to do is pan the camera across the front of the work cell. So we're going to find a good place in the timeline where we want this motion to finish. And then we're going to select our camera and move it to the other side of the work cell. Again, once we've found a good view, we can set a key and then play the animation back. We can add as many camera positions as we like. The goal is to show the entire animation with a good clean flow. So I'm going to keyframe this new position and then play the animation back again and see how that looks. Just like any other object, if we're not happy with the speed something moves at, we can slide its keyframe down to increase the time it takes to get to that position. So now that looks a little smoother. Now what I'm going to do is hold shift and drag this key to make a copy of it. Next we can set up our last camera position behind the robot so our camera pans across the side of the robot. So we can move our timeline to the new position and then move our camera over until we get a good view.
Once you've found a view you like, we can keyframe this again and then replay the animation. So that last camera pan seems like it's a little quick. So what we can do is adjust these keyframes a little bit to make it more smooth. So I'm going to move the original one over a few frames. So what I'm going to do is move our original keyframes over to give it some more time at the end and then move our final keyframe over to the right more. And now we get a much smoother motion. As a final note about cameras, if we select a camera, we can go to the Modify tab, and there's a bunch of different parameters we can play with, such as the field of view and the lens size. Now these are all parameters that we can change using the Auto Key mode, just like we did visibility. So if we go into the Auto Key mode and then adjust these, they should set new keyframes, so you can adjust the parameters mid-animation. Also what we can do is add as many cameras as we'd like, so you can set up different views and render each of them separately. And then you can clip the animations together later in a video editing pro So now we're going to finish this project by rendering it to a video file. So if we go up to the rendering tab, we can click render setup. Alternately, we can go straight to it from the rendering setup teapot. So in here we can change a ton of different things, but the most important are under the common parameters. So if single selected, what that'll do is render just the current frame in the active window. So if we hit render, we can see that. So if you want to render your whole video, what you do is change this to active time segment. You can also specify a specific range that we want to render. Also, we can change the output size of our video to anything we'd like or use some of the common formats here. The last key parameter is the render output setup. So if we click files, you can select a destination for your video and give it a name. And then what we want to do, since we want a video, we can select AVI file and that'll create an AVI video format. And then click save. So there's a few different compressors you can use. I'll just use the standard one for now. And then we can either hit render here, or alternately, we can hit the render teapot. And that'll render the active window for the entire selected time segment. So this renders frame by frame, which can take a long time depending on how complex your scene is, how long your animation is, and other factors such as your materials. So this is rendering against the black background, but if we want to change that, we can go into the rendering tab and select environment. So in here under background, we can actually select a picture to use, or we can just change the color with this color rectangle. So I'm going to change this to white and show you what that looks like. So then if we re-render this, we can just overwrite our file and now it's going to render to a white background. So if you've been following along until now, you can have a completely rendered animation.